know if there's one group that I've had a problem with for years. And I don't, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the common denominator. It's possible. Is it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Now, I like our policy that we have now better than any we've had in a long time. But these letters drive me crazy. So, <laughs> the letter basically says, no, that's what it says. Well, that looks like on, right on. Does that look like no now? Look, no. Oh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> so, my littlest Amos has autism and takes lots of different medicine. He takes um, trazodone for sleeping, melatonin for sleeping, guanfacine, memantine. Um, what else does he take? We have a new one we're taking. Anyway, lots of stuff, ADHD, anxiety, all the things. And he's been on medicine since he, he was about four. And I will tell you, it's no mother's dream to have her child take medicine, right? It's just not, it's, none of us want to do it. Instead, we would all rather just have, you know, typical kids that don't need any medicine, you know, unless it's like a Tylenol here and there, um, you know? So it's funny to have to get put in the position when you have to beg for medicine that a doctor has prescribed. So go with me here. So memantine is um, a medicine. Amos has tried SSRIs. Now, SSRI is like sertraline, Zoloft, blah, 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 all those types of things. Those cause him to have ticks. Now, a tick, not like a tick, like a tick, a tick like a flappy hand, or for him, the tick is, <gasps> he does these breathing ticks. Now, the breathing ticks are not good because then they can turn into what we thought was cyclical vomiting degree, disease. So then we were on, uh, we were in the medicine for like, in the medicine. We were in the medicine. We were in the hospital for a few days. Well, that is obviously very expensive. <clears throat> now, is the doctor's office helping? Yes, the doctor's office has been delightful. I mean, Dr. Copeland's nurse, who shall go nameless, she and I are like best friends. I mean, we text, we talk from the bathroom, the bathtub. I mean, we are tight because she has called so many times. Like, we are connected. The problem is not the doctor's office. It's not the pharmacy. Blunt's my local pharmacy. They've been so helpful. This this has come from CVS because um, we were desperate to get it because this medicine is very important for people that need to go to school. Because if we don't take this medicine, then we have a really hard time getting out of the car in the morning. We already have a hard time getting out of the car in the morning, but this is basically like, I'm trying to think of what I can describe this as. This is like my coffee to me. I need coffee right in the morning. If I don't have coffee, I'm foul. This is Amos's coffee. So Dr. Copeland at Duke Autism, he's a pediatric psychiatrist, asked Dr. Copeland to have a one-to-one -one call with the doctor at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yes, I can do that. But you know what, Carol? I shouldn't have to. Dr. Copeland cannot call every doctor at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Damn it, I am the parent and I am going to handle this. The nurse is called. We've gotten three denials. Three. Well, the last time we talked, I promise I got a letter. Now I can't find it. That said, no problem. We're not denying it. And then ding, ding, ding. It's back. We've denied. So Dr. Copeland knows that the SSRI drugs that we've been trying now for five years. Well, really six. Five years. It's called Memantine. And if I had to buy it out of pocket, it would be $130 for the additional dosage. But the story gets better. Um, 
elected officials. Cynthia, what are you smoking? Elected officials? What? God, Lord help me. Dear baby Jesus, help me. This is why I have a subscriber page. Now, Dr. Copeland knows we have to switch to an antipsychotic. If anybody out there has to give their child an antipsychotic, I would just like to say, I see you, I hear you, and I hurt you. Because it is a terrible, um, it is a terrible thing to have to choose an antipsychotic for a little person that you adore and love because it sounds terrible, right? Right. So we've chosen an antipsychotic, which um, Nementine kind of is going along with this, the other medicine we have that's covered. So Dr. Copeland prescribes um, six mLs in the morning and six mLs at night, right? Great. Well, we decide the memetine is working, so he wants to go up on the dose because I feel like we need a little bit more. So we go up to 10 mLs twice a day, or we want to. CVS, even they even fill it for that amount because they, um, I don't know, they're wonderful and sneaky. Thank you, CVS, for doing that. I appreciate it. But Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina says this. This document serves as notice of an adverse benefit determination. Basically, you ain't getting nothing you want. We have declined to provide benefits in whole or in part for the requested treatment or service described below. If you think this determination was made in error, you have the right to appeal. I know, I've already appealed. Member name, blah, 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 Amos, blah, blah, blah. Reason for denial. Now, this is wonderful. An additional clinical pharmacist review determined that the request does not meet the definition of medical necessity found in the member's benefit book. After a review, oh, and then they reviewed it. So this is the second review. After the review of more clinical information, the request for coverage of memantine, two milligrams per milliliter strength, 20 mLs daily remains denied. The allowed amount is 12 mLs per day. The dose requested is more than the highest dose recommended by the FDA and adequate medical information to support the requested amount was sent in for review, including, was not sent in for review, including detailed information on other medicines and doses used to treat and how long each of those medications was taken. Now, one thing I would suggest to Blue Cross Blue Shield is we don't need to send you the amount of medications and dosages he that he's been sent. You know why? Because you know them. You have better records than I do. I promise you the incorrect diagnosis codes are being used. No, they're not. She checked for that. No, this, the person on the phone, I don't know what his name is. Let's call him Richie. Richie Rich. Richie tells me that amount is inappropriate. Dr. Copeland says that amount is not inappropriate. So who's right? You're going to bet. You're betting on Alabama, or are you going to bet on who'd Alabama play? Florida State. It's close. It's close. You're betting on Florida State. <laughs> It's like a slow, slow burn. Can you get a different insurance? Uh, no, we cannot. I like our insurance and we live in North Carolina. It, it is, it's Michigan. Thank you, Michigan. Who lost terribly? Somebody lost bad. Who is that that lost by like a hundred? No. <laughs> All these questions. Anyway, I called the pharmacy. Tomorrow, I'll call my friend at Dr. Copeland's, and I'll call Blue Cross again, and I'll beg for medicine from Richie Rich. Mm -hmm. That's all. Goodbye. Subscribers, see you later.